Hi everyone, it's Christy here from KP Creatives with another video for Two Scrapbook Friends. Today we're going to be making some really fun holiday cards using holiday ephemera. So if you've had a chance to pick up any of the collection packs that have been out this year, or if you have any holiday ephemera in your collection, this is gonna be a great project for you to use some of that up. So I've got the supplies we're gonna use listed here. We'll pop this up again at the end of the video so you can take a screenshot if you would like. I'm gonna do two different cards today with different color schemes. The first one, we're gonna do some ink blending with Distress Oxides using candied apple, mustard seed, and salvaged patina. And the other one, we're going to do some ink blending with the dye inks from Pink Fresh Studio using Sparkling Rose, Sunshine, and Aquamarine. So you'll get to see two different ways that this, this card can come together. I've got some jewels here from Studio Katya. We've got some clear um, gems that really get some good sparkle. And these ones I think are called Poseidon. They're also from Studio Katya and give a really great um, addition of some bling to your card projects. I've got some blending brushes. I do have different blending brushes for dye inks versus oxide inks. So that's why I've got uh, a bunch of blending brushes here. And we're going to use two different kinds of paper. I'm going to be ink blending on the Bristol Smooth cardstock. Great cardstock to ink blend either your oxides or your dyeing. So if you struggle with ink blending or you're new to it, uh, it is a great smooth paper to ink blend on. We've also got some Nina Classic Crest Solar White in the 110 pound weight cardstock. And I have cut and scored these to be port or sorry, landscape A2 size cards, which means they are five and a half inches across and four and a half inches tall. So you can take a standard piece of eight and a half by 11 paper, you can cut it down the middle and then score in the middle of each half. And there you've got your card base. So some nice heavyweight card bases there that we will work with when we're putting our final cards together. I've then got this great stencil from My Favorite Things. And I had the packaging earlier, um, just like scissors disappear on your craft desk, the packaging for this stencil has disappeared. So this is called the Watercolor Wash Freeform Stencil. And My Favorite Things has a couple of these. It comes with the outline. It also comes with the inside piece. So when I do find that, um, I'll have to put that back together. But it comes with that piece as well. So you can either ink blend or watercolor on the inside, or you could just do a border around the edge. So we'll get to that in a second. And the ephemera pack that I'm using today is from Pink Fresh Studio. This is their holiday magic ephemera collection that came out this year with their holiday collection. So some really great um, pieces of ephemera here. Um, some of them probably remind you of the movie Elf, like Smiling is My Favorite and Spreading Christmas Cheer. Um, so lots of fun ones. And I really like the color scheme of this one. So the, you'll see um, how we can use each of these different color palettes um, to bring this card together. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the oxide inks because oxide inks take a little bit longer to dry because they are a fusion of pigment and dye inks. And the surface that I am blending on today is new to me. This is the Waffle Flower Stencil Mat. So that's the white mat that you see here. I've got my stencil and the Bristol Smooth Paper tucked right into the corner. And it's it's not moving. It's stuck right to, the paper stuck right to the mat, which is great. I do have a little piece of painter's tape connecting the paper to the stencil, but um, but that's it. So I got the idea for this color palette combo. So we're going to start with the candied apple. Um, Christina Werner, who's Star of May on Instagram, and uh, one of her colleagues, uh, they put together an ink combos guide. And this was one of the guides that they had, or one of the um, combos that they had in their guide. So if you have a chance, you can check it out on her blog. If you Google Christina Werner blog, um, there's 10 different combos and they're all geared for holiday projects. So really cool and fun. And they give you a bunch of the different ink brands. So whether you have Gina K inks, Concord and Ninth, My Favorite Things, or, you know, the Tim Holtz Distress Line, uh, they're all listed there so you can uh, really t get a lot of inspiration from the colors that they've put together. So now I'm bringing in the mustard seed, nice rich yellow. We're going to get that blended in really well with the candied apple so we have a nice 
seamless blend. And I'm really liking this surface for blending. This is great. Again, this is that new um, waffle flower stencil mat. So now we're going in with Salvaged Patina, one of the gorgeous newish colors in the Tim Holtz Distress line. And you can see how this Bristol paper just blends with hardly any effort. It is amazing. And if you're new to ink blending, you'll really find quickly that the paper you use makes a big difference. And that happened just because my tape came apart there that's um, just taping the stencil to the paper. So sorry about that, but everything's fine. No crisis, <laughs> no craft crisis. So I'm gonna close up my Distress Oxides and show you the peel and reveal of this freeform watercolor on this piece of paper. So isn't that so cool? It, you know, if, if I was watercoloring, um, it, it would, <laughs> it would not turn out like this, um, you know, with that really cool edge, it just looks really cool. So I'm going to take the painter's tape off here and set this aside to dry. Going to give the stencil a quick wipe with the baby wipes so we can get ready to do our dye inks. Let's give the mat a quick wipe there. And because the Distress Oxides are pretty juicy, I'm just gonna give it a wipe just on the inside so we don't get any cross-contamination on our project today. Just a quick wipe on the back and that looks great. So now I'm gonna get another piece of the Bristol Smooth paper and I'm gonna take my stencil and I'm just gonna get it centered on the back here and we'll reuse that piece of painter's tape just to secure that to the back. And we're gonna get this back down in the corner of the stencil mat. So now I'm going to use the Pink Fresh Studio dye inks. We're going to start with Sparkling Rose, then Sunshine, and Aquamarine. And if you get these ink cubes from Pink Fresh Studio, that one is being a little stubborn to open, uh, it's really cool because they come in four packs and the four packs are in color families. So for each four pack, you get um, dark, medium, and light tones. So all I did was I have the pink, yellow, and teal sets of four, and I picked one of the mid-tone colors from each group. So it's a really cool way to make sure you can get colors that actually are going to look good together. Um, so I really like that about how they... Uh, have their inks available. It's a really easy way to make sure you're going to get some good blending. And of course, I'm just going in, you know, a little bit of rainbow order here with the pink, yellow, and then teal. And again, you can see this Bristol paper, fantastic for blending, whether it's oxides or dye inks. I'm going to load this up pretty good. I want this to be pretty vibrant to go with some of the colors that are in that Holiday Magic collection from Pink Fresh. Let's just bring that Sparkling Rose a little bit further and then we're going to switch over to Sunshine. So here we go. And that's looking great, getting a nice blend. I'm probably going to go back in with the Sparkling Rose just to make that blend seamless. A little more of the sunshine down in this section. And there we go. Sometimes when you're ink blending with yellow, you really have to try and, I think Christina Werner, I think it's in one of her videos where she really talks about protecting the yellow. And it's true because it can really disappear on you. So sometimes you have to go back a little bit um, when you're using yellow and just make sure it's not going to disappear on you totally. But that's looking great. So we're going to go in with the last color, our teal aquamarine. 
which we might not normally think of as a holiday Christmas color, but I really love how it blends into that sunshine and is also a good complement to the sparkling rose. So the brushes that I use for my oxides are the ones from Tailored Expressions. The ones that I have for dye inks are the ones from Gina K. You can use whatever blending tool works for you. And again, just like the paper matters for ink blending, the tool matters too. So whatever works for you is what you want to use. Just going to get a little bit more of that aquamarine. Come in just a little bit with the sunshine. And there we go. So as you might know, dye inks dry quite a bit faster than oxide or pigment inks. So it shouldn't take too long for that to dry. So see the peel and reveal here. And there we go. Another fantastic looking watercolor wash from this great stencil from My Favorite Things. They actually have a couple different designs um, of that stencil. So definitely check those out. They are a great addition to your collection because what you'll see as we put together these cards is you could use absolutely anything. I'm sure the ideas are already percolating in your crafty brains about what you could do on top of that watercolor wash. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of different things that, that I did. But you could stamp on it. You could emboss. Um, you could put die cuts on top. You could do absolutely anything. So I'm just going to get this, peel this stencil mat up off my work surface. Get that out of the way. And we're going to work on putting these cards together. So now we're going to bring in our card bases to be able to put these final projects together. So I'm going to show you a couple of different things before we get rolling with the final um, pieces that we're going to put together. So I did a few different examples of this watercolor stencil. On this one, I put over top of it some of the Tim Holtz Distress grit paste in snowfall. So I hope you can see on the camera there that it picks up that texture that it adds on top. So again, that's the Tim Holtz crackle, or sorry, the not crackle, the Tim Holtz grit paste in Snowfall. So it adds a little bit of shine and definitely adds some dimension. So you can see the difference. So this is just plain. This is with the grit paste. And then I have another one in the this color scheme. This one I just sprayed with some of the shimmer spray that you can get. There's a bunch of different brands that have shimmer spray. So this one I did like a full wash of the glitter. And then I did another one where I actually cut out the watercolor uh, wash. And again, I used some spray shimmer and then covered it with the grit paste. So you can do all kinds of different things um, with this watercolor wash stencil and cutting it out. I, I'm not a fan of fussy cutting, but honestly, it, it did not take long at all. So lots of different things that you can do. So since we just put the ink on these two, I'm actually going to set them aside to dry a little bit longer. And we're going to use a couple of these ones that have already dried um, to be able to work on our project today. So I'm actually going to bring that grit paste one back in. I think we'll use that and then we'll use this one that has the sparkle on it as well. So this panel was cut right to the same size. So five and a half inches by four and a quarter. This one has a little bit of a border. So that's fine. We'll we'll work with both. So first thing we're going to do is bring in the piece of the ephemera that we're going to use 
with this color scheme. And the one that I chose from that Holiday Magic Kit from Pink Fresh is Merry and Bright. I added pieces of foam tape to the back of this. And just so we're giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room as we put this final card together, I'm going to put some liquid glue on the back of that foam tape. And that's just gonna create a little bit of a hydroplane so we can wiggle things around. We don't wanna be stuck with the first spot we put this down. We wanna make sure we get it right where we want it. So we're gonna go with this. I think that looks pretty good. All the pieces are within the wash, which is what I wanted and just press that down. And since we've got dimension on the piece of ephemera, I think we'll just actually adhere this right to the card base. So I am going to bring in my tape runner and just run some adhesive right along the edge of this panel. So edge to edge, I wanna make sure I've got my card base upright. Please tell me I'm not the only one who has gotten to this stage of a card project and then glued your panel or adhered your panel to your card base upside down. I'm not alone, right? That happens, happens to everybody. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got one done. We're gonna come back to that and put some sequins on in a moment. I'm going to adhere this panel right to the card front. And I'm going to bring in the secret weapon ruler for this one because we've got a little bit of a border. So we're going to come in an eighth of an inch on all sides and press that down. That looks good. And for this sentiment, I'm going to bring in the spread Christmas cheer and I'm just going to tilt it a little bit. And then we're gonna put some sequins around it. I've got some foam tape cut on the back here. We're gonna get a little bit of that liquid glue again. Give us some wiggle room. That looks great. For this card, I'm going to use some of the Poseidon gems from Studio Katia. I'm gonna get a few of these. I'm using the jewel pick tool from Maker Forte, which is a fantastic jewel pick tool. It's great because it has this end that has the black end is a little tacky, and then the other end is um, a pokey tool to use a very technical term. <laughs> Just gonna get a couple of sequins here. Do a little cascade of probably five. Yeah, that looks great. So I'm gonna bring in the liquid glue and if you struggle sometimes with adding liquid glue to get your sequins on, one trick is to let the glue set for a moment. So even in the few seconds we've been talking, this glue up here has set a little bit and it's gonna make it easier when I put the sequin on. It's not gonna slip slide all over the place. Sometimes when you, when you glue these down, they slip slide everywhere and they end up not being where you want them. But if you let it set up for just a few seconds, it makes a big difference. I'm just gonna move that top one just a little and then we'll get these ones down. And this glue from Lawn Fawn, if you haven't used it, it's absolutely fantastic. It dries clear, so you can see the glue oozed out a little bit on those sides, doesn't matter. It's gonna dry totally clear. 
And I actually am going to add one more of the little sequins up here. I think having a little group of three here will just bring this all together. So I'll just add that. And I'm going to get a little bigger one. There we go. So there we've got our first card together. I'm going to bring in the second one and switch up our sequins and crystals. These are the crystals from Studio Katya again. These ones have a lot of great shine to them. And I think that's really going to pick up the shine that's in this Snowfall Grit Paste that we've got over our watercolor wash here. So I'll just grab a few of these. I think we'll put them in this little nook on the card. And then maybe a few here, just down in this section. I'd like to get a couple of the larger ones. And that's the really nice thing about these Studio Katya gems is they come in different sizes, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of that little one there and bring in another medium sized one, I think. And that'll be great. Okay, so we'll get those out of the way. Bring in our liquid glue. It's always nice, uh, I've learned this from Kathy Zilski in her card making videos and her design knowledge, to have things in groups of three. So again, as we let that glue set up, I'll just get these sequins out of the way, but having things in three really creates a lot of visual interest on your project. So you'll notice if you see card makers um, you know, on YouTube or on Instagram, they, they often are putting their bling and embellishments in groups of three. All right. So we've got that liquid glue setting up and holding on to those sequins and we'll set that aside to dry. And that is card number two. So I hope this video has given you some in inspiration to take a look at ephemera packs that you probably already have in your collection or even stickers that you've had for a long time, um, any type of cut apart page that you could use to put these cards together on that great watercolor wash freeform stencil from My Favorite Things. So I hope if you have some time and you have these supplies or supplies like them, um, you will give this a try. Please post your photos if you do and tag us. We'd love to see the work that you're doing. If you have a moment, please subscribe to the channel so you'll get notifications when we post new videos and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you're having fun getting ready for the holidays and we'll see you next time.